We are back for our sixth, sixth and final session of the evening. If you're just tuning in with us, welcome. For those of you who would like to hear the conference in Spanish, I will pause a second as we explain how to use the interpretation feature. Muy buenas tardes a todos. Esta es nuestra última sesión para el día de hoy. En estos momentos vamos a comenzar a interpretar al español. Si desea escuchar esta presentación en el idioma, puede seleccionar la opción en la parte inferior de la pantalla o en el símbolo del mundo. Si por algún motivo no escucha al intérprete, regrese al inglés y vuelva a intentar la opción en español. Si aún no funciona, favor de avisarnos por el chat. Thank you. That was Steffi Fuentes, and we want to thank her for um, translating throughout this evening, explaining to parents how to activate that interpretation feature. Thanks, Stephanie. This next presentation is brought to you by Stacy Segal and Dr. Cinnamon Sheffield from the Dallas ISD Athletics Department. Dr. Sheffield is in her second year with Dallas ISD. She has oversight of athletics compliance as well as volleyball and soccer. Dr. Sheffield, who is a Dallas ISD graduate of Skyline High School, who ran track at South Oak Cliff High School, she comes to Dallas ISD after a distinguished career at the University of North Texas. Presenting alongside Dr. Sheffield is Stacy Segal. The 2020-2021 school year will be Stacy's um, 28th year in education. She has served Dallas ISD for 17 years. Stacy begins her seventh year working as an assistant director of athletics for Dallas ISD. Prior to central administration, Stacy served as an assistant principal and campus athletic coordinator. Stacy loves motivational speaking and having the opportunity to share her craft with the over 950 coaches and 13,000 student athletes in Dallas ISD. At this time, I will turn it over to the experts as they present school athletic participation requirements, grades 7th through 12th grade. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. We are glad that you are here to um, listen to us talk about athletics. We could talk about athletics all day, but we've only got a few minutes. So we'll get started. We'll start with um, Stacy. Um, so good afternoon, good evening, um, welcome. So as we start our presentation, we really want to talk about the perfect triangle. And as you begin the school year for your student athlete, regardless whether it is at the middle school or the high school level, it's important for you to know as a parent how the relationship between the parent-athlete, athlete-coach, and coach-parent all bring relevance. So we're going to show you just a brief clip um, called The Perfect Triangle. Last chance for self. Need a lift? Yeah. Guys, make some room. Toyota, let's go places. <laughs> Obviously not a Toyota ad, but um, <laughs> Athletics is really about character, and that really is our goal in Dallas ISD. And although there is a scoreboard, um, we do keep score. But ultimately, as we, Dr. Sheffield talks about the mission, um, we really do want to establish the perfect triangle um, between the athlete and the parent and the coach, um, not just between um, the coach and student athlete. So our mission, Dallas ISD's um, our athletic department is here to develop leaders. We want to instill discipline, integrity, and sportsmanship in all of our student athletes. So we want to make whole people, not just students, not just athletes, but total students, or so total people. A few quick facts about the Dallas ISD athletic program. 
We serve 22 high schools, 32 middle schools. Our department has nine central athletic complexes, seven pools and natatoriums. We sponsored 21 sports across four different UIL classifications. We have over 13,000 student athletes, more than 950 coaches, and we compete in over 6,500 competitions per school year as a district. The NFHS, or National Federation of High Schools, is one of the governing bodies that writes the rules for middle school and high school athletics. There are a number of benefits for participating in athletics. If your child is a student athlete, we expect that they will have better educational outcomes. We believe that they'll have an enhanced sense of belonging and school engagement. We do believe that they will develop positive life skills. They will engage in healthier behaviors. They will have more success post high school and they will develop into better citizens. And on that note, 33% two years ago of the valedictorians in Dallas ISD were student athletes. So we are under the jurisdiction of the UIL, the University Interscholastic League, which governs what we do as an athletics department. And along Dallas ISD, along with UIL, we base our programs on the premise that athletes are students first. For athletes, athletics is a privilege um, not a right. So they will learn to deal with success and overcome diversity. And data actually shows that students who participate in extracurricular activities make better grades and have less discipline problems. So we encourage our athletes at all times to be great people, great citizens, great students, great athletes. So we have um, two different divisions, middle school and high school. So our middle school students are seventh and eighth grade only. No sixth graders can participate in this particular part of athletics. So they must, um, as they start in seventh grade, we have a myriad of sports ranging from football, cross country, volleyball, soccer, basketball, track and field, softball, baseball. So it's, there are lots of opportunities for our students to participate in sports. The practices are held before or after school. So they must attend either one of those, either before or after school. It depends on what school they are attending. Um, I can't miss class for games. Most of the games will be during the week, once a week, and some on Saturdays. And it kind of depends on the sport. So for more information on that, you must contact your campus middle school. Um, each school has their own athletic director or, camp or athletic coordinator. And actually the athletic period during seventh and eighth grade counts as their physical education credit. So you get your credit for being an athlete. You get a, a credit for that, so. Our high school athletic program is offered for our students in grades nine through 12. Unlike the middle school, high school athletics also offers swimming and diving, tennis, wrestling, and golf. In addition to our team sports of football, volleyball, basketball, soccer, and track and field, and then our other individual sport cross country. Practices are held before or after school, again, depending on the coach, and then attendance is required. High school games are scheduled on weeknights, sometimes twice a week, and on Saturdays. Times will vary depending on the sport. Students may miss class, some class time because of UIL activities. For more information about specific sports, you can actually go to our website at dallasisd.org backslash athletics. And there is a page specifically for our campus athletic coordinators at the high school level that you may find their contact information um, and read a small bio about each of them. Um, and I highly encourage you to visit our site as it has a lot of other information. Um, as middle school, the athletic period in high school does count as a physical education credit. Two years ago, um, board policy changed that allowed magnet students who participate in athletics to receive a physical education credit. Students who attend a magnet school 
that does not sponsor athletics, Townview, Irma Rangel, et cetera, may participate in athletics only at their home campus where they reside. So for example, if they live in the Woodrow Wilson attendant zone and they go to Townview, they cannot go and play a sport at Hillcrest or Brian Adams or South Oak Cliff. They must, again, if you attend a magnet school, you may only participate at your home campus where you reside. All students, again, at the magnet school should contact their athletic coordinator at their home campus for information about specific sport tryout dates. Why is that really important at this time? We will discuss it a little bit later in our slides. Um, it is important for you to know as a parent that Dallas ISD does not provide transportation for magnet students to and from practices. I know at times if you are on a campus and there's a bus running from your home campus to a magnet school, they may take those regular routine scheduled buses. However, our athletic department does not provide them transportation to get from the school to a practice or to a facility for a game. Um, the new part of this is their, the athletic substitution credit. Students enrolled in magnets, choice schools, or their home campuses that do not offer athletics or specific athletic periods may receive a physical education credit at their home campus if they participate in a UIL sponsored sport. For more information, you can go to Dallas Board Policy EIF regulation, and there's an application there, and it must be received within two weeks after the semester starts. You may also contact any of your students' counselors um, who do attend a magnet school, and they will have this information for you as well. Actually, I was one of those students. I live in the South Oak Cliff attendance zone, and I went to Skyline High School but I had to run track at South Oak Cliff because that was my home school. So looks like not much has changed since the ancient days that I was in high school. So in order to be eligible for athletics in Dallas ISD, there are a couple of things that you must adhere to. First of all, you have to have a physical. Every year you must get a physical and have that on file. Along with um, UIL has requirements, as you see the uh, website below, that you must adhere to. So, and they are very strict, very specific. So you have to make sure you visit that website so you come, become familiar with those requirements. There's also an age requirement um, that you must adhere to. However, if not, you can submit a waiver for approval if your age does not fit into the requirements that are listed for UIL. Um, and back to the attendance zone is very, very important. You can't just randomly go to any school. Um, you must um, attend the school that's in your attendance zone where your parents live. And if you go to a different, if you're accepted into magnet, magnet schools around the district, then those rules, those are different rules that apply to you. But for the most part, you must attend the school that you were in the attendance zone that you live. You can't just change schools because you don't like that particular school's athletics department. You can't ch change schools or transfer for athletic reasons. You'll have to sit out a year if that happens. There's also an amateurism rule that you must adhere to. And again, all of these rules are in um, at the UIL website below. So however, there may be some schools who have stricter rules, but you will find those rules out at the school or from the athletic coordinator that is um, there at that campus. There is an additional component of eligibility that actually is not listed on here. And that is that all parents must complete um, forms through rank one. Rank one is our software tool that we use in the athletic department, which will allow you as a parent to um, fill out an emergency card, history form. Um, but these are forms that you can also find directly on our website at mm -hmm. dallasisd.org backslash athletics, or um, you can contact any um, high school or middle school um, athletic coordinator and they can give you the link directly. How are we playing sports during a, during a pandemic? So we have guidelines um, that were sent to us from UIL. There's a parent information manual, um, one for junior high and high school sports. 
please understand that we as an athletic department have been very intentional on providing safe spaces for our student athletes. Um, our assistant ADs have gone through all of the high schools. We're in the um, right now going through middle schools, uh, making sure that they have everything they need from PPE, signage, um, everything that's going to make your um, students safe. Um, we've got thermometers, so we, we, we've been working diligently to provide a place of safety for our students with masks and rules and guidelines. And as you, say, as you click on the QR code, um, it'll take you right to those mitigating um, guidelines, mitigation guidelines um, for that UIL, our governing body, has sent down to us. And then we as a district also provide um, rules and regulations. Each campus has to submit a reentry plan. And we walk through those reentry plans with our athletic trainers, along with the athletic coordinators. And I actually had one today, the assistant principal walked through the plan with us. So everybody's on their uh, P's and Q's to making sure that we have provide safe environment for your students. In addition to that, um, one of the questions that I know is, is on many of your minds is that um, what if my student is a remote learner? Um, will they be able to participate in athletics? Um, yes, they will. Um, what we are waiting on right now are more information. And as soon as we have an answer, we will let you know is, is, is what does that look like? Will that student athlete be able to participate during the athletic period of that school? Or will they be strictly um, only able to come after school for those practices? And so um, the main question, though, is that if your student is in a remote um, learning environment, they will be able to participate in athletics. There is um, our contact information. Um, that those emails, um, you can email notifyathletics at dallasisd.org if you have a specific question. Um, and then that will be um, disseminated to the assistant athletic director that could um, appropriately answer that question. That's our direct line to our athletic department as well, our website link. Um, and then we do, we do tweet as a department, um, and I highly encourage you to follow that um, as the UIL updates do change regularly. Um, if you did notice on the last slide about COVID, um, if you're able to go back, um, Dr. Johnson, for one slide, if possible. Yeah, if you'll notice the, the large red right there, please check the Dallas ISD and UIL websites frequently for current updates. Um, the newest update, and I will um, let you guys know, um, as you know, Dallas County was in a, um, an order um, that no participation originally was supposed to start until September the 8th, which is um, our first day of school in Dallas ISD. Um, a couple of days ago, that has now been moved for athletics. Um, so we've moved up the start date to return for athletic activities for some of our schools now to August 24th. And so it is very important that you um, stay up to date on those websites, follow our Twitter. If you do not have um, Twitter or social media access, you can always send an email um, or just stay up to date on our website, um, or just pick up the phone and call. We'd be more than happy to help you any way we possibly can. Um, I think we want to take this time now to answer as many questions if you if you have them um, for you. So thank you. It is now time for our Q and A session with our presenters. I have the the um, most frequently asked questions um, that have been asked on our Q and A feed and I'll um, present those to our both presenters at this time and allow them to um, take those on. So the first sure. question, how will virtual learning affect football students? Um, so good afternoon. Um, so to begin with, um, virtual learning should not affect any of our students regardless of what sport they are participating in. Um, the question again that we're waiting to find out is that if your student is in a uh, virtual learning environment, um, will they be able to attend the athletic period or will they have to specifically come to after school practice? And so 
Um, that is a question we are waiting to find out. If your student is at home learning, um, when they report to campus, they will go through a pre-screening process just to, to let you know. Um, so they will have to answer um, their COVID questions, their temperature will be um, taken, and you will be informed of what those, the maps look like, how to, um, to access that information. Um, but there should not be any um, direct effect as far as football students. What I can tell you is our calendars have changed. Um, so it is very important as we talked about the UIL calendar, um, football, which was supposed to um, start, and it's the goal to typically play through Thanksgiving. Um, our football season does not end now till the middle of December. And so many of our season dates have changed. Um, so it's very important for you to, to take a look at what, what has happened with the sports as far as postponing, flipping seasons. Um, we do have some decisions to still make. Okay, next question. Will I have the opportunity to withdraw my child out of athletics before school starts? I mean, I, I can answer that question again. Um, I would think that that would be a question that you would just yeah. pick up the phone and call um, the counseling services office as far as they're creating those schedules. Um, or if, um, but as far as the athletic class is actually a class for graduation, um, that that would be handled directly by your students' um, counseling services departments. Oh, yeah. Okay. Another question. My child has his schedule already in eighth grade. His athletics is first period. If we choose virtual learning, will he be able to go to school first period and then leave after practice? So, um, so uh, we absolutely. So yeah. typically right now, if I think the question would be number one is, is um, what sport is he participating in? So if he shows up for eighth grade and he is in basketball, um, basketball is not in season right now. Right. So he would, however, be able to come to the athletic period um, with all the same screening procedures if that has been approved. Yet again, right now, we, there's not been a determination whether we will allow students to participate um, in the athletic period if they're remote or strictly after school. Um, if he is allowed to participate during the period, yes, he would be able to come the athletic period and then return to remote learning. Okay. Will students still be able to participate in multiple sports? Yes. Yes. Thank you. And um, also, will there be cheerleading in middle school this year? So cheerleading falls under um, student um, activities, a different department. Um, my recommendation would be to contact um, Sharla Hudspeth um, and you can also probably find her information directly on the website. I think it varies from school to school as well. So it's not okay. one big overarching answer for that one. Okay, thank you. Our last and final question is, um, eSports has been um, widely talked about. Will that be an option for Dallas ISD? eSports, did you say? Sports. Esports. So that is that has not been a discussion we've had in our department. We are planning to rock and roll um, with our sports, kinda as usual. Besides the calendar changes, but that has not been a discussion for Dallas ISD athletics at this point. And esports again falls under student activities. Um, it is not under the department of athletics. Okay. Uh, lastly, when will the the sports schedule come out? When do you anticipate um, it will? Right. So actually right now, if you go to the UIL website, um, there are some sports actually on the website right now that says start dates for, um, yeah, if you don't, if we have a little bit of time, if you don't mind, if you could go to the, if you, can, so there you can go to risk mitigation or you can go there, it doesn't matter. That's going to take us directly to the eligibility, but right there would be great. But if you go to the UIL website right here, and then if you go to home, um, yeah, so right here to the left, Dr. Johnson, it says fall athletic calendars, athletics. Uh, come back, up some, up some, up some. Right here? Keep going down. Oh, there it is. Right there. Yes, ma'am. 
So okay. our calendars are different, but if you um, click on 5-6-A, so these would be um, kind of tentative <laughs> schedules for when regular seasons begin, regular seasons end. They have it in many different formats. Um, that, that information is actually on our website. Um, I do think it's a little bit easier to, to take a look, and I don't know if you can actually go to our website, Dr. Johnson, um, sure. because I would love to send people there as well. Yep. Um, well, well, I see it, it, it we can go to it. Let's see here. It was Dallas Eyes. Did I write You want to say? I do want to um, again reiterate um, this could change tomorrow. <laughs> It's very important. And so right now, the UIL, our governing body, um, is planning on moving forward with, um, and you can scroll down, is planning on moving forward with athletics. Um, and so we're moving right along as we're going to participate in all of our sports. Um, that could change. So if you click on um, UIL announce a start date, you'll also he see here why I'm here. I'm just going to go on and talk about it. Um, we just we, we will not sell – Go ahead. We will not sell tickets at the doors. Right. Um, you will now be able to actually watch our um, games in central sites live um, now. So if you, and that's pretty small, but if you're able to blow that up, there's just some start dates as well. And they have not made um, a lot of the termination, but if you go to um, the UIL website, you're able to find that information. Okay. So parents are able to purchase subscriptions for um, live streaming, and then they can watch games in the comfort of their own homes. <laughs> okay. We'll also put ticket information on how to, because there are no tickets um, being sold at the gates. Um, they will, you, are, you will be able to do that online. So we will have all that information on our website when the tickets are, where the games are and when the tickets will become available and how many. That's going to be pretty crucial as we um, adhere to the CDC capacity numbers. So the normal tickets that we sell will be less. So we'll only have a few available. So that'll all come out on our website. Okay. Okay. Well, we'd like to thank Dr. Cinnamon Sheffield and Stacey Skull for taking the time to present and answer questions regarding school athletics. Thank you both. It was our pleasure. Thank you. <laughs>